So it's been a few months since I've done a pedalboard run through and there's been a few additions that I've added since then that I just thought would be really cool to share with you guys. The board has grown slightly, it's adapted slightly, but there are some key principles when it comes to building pedal boards that I always keep in mind and I want to share with you guys. So guys, if you haven't seen my mini pedal board run through that I did a few months ago, I will list it down in the description below so you can go and check it out and kind of compare it against the changes that I've made today. Um, but basically I'm just going to go through the board, just talk to you a little bit about the signal chain, what I'm using, and more importantly how I'm using it, and my approach to actually building pedal boards in terms of what are my non-negotiables, what are the things that I always need for the types of guitar gigs that I do. And hopefully that'll provide some inspiration for you if you are looking to kind of revamp or build your first pedal board. So the board itself is actually something that has changed from the first kind of iteration of this video that I did. I was using the Pedal Train Metro 16, but because I've acquired a few more pedals, I needed to actually build a bigger board. So I've gone for the Pedal Deck board, which I bought from Anderton's. Pedal Deck are a UK manufacturer of pedal boards based in Milton Keynes, I think. Um, this is one of the smaller ones in the range. I'll leave a link down below to the exact version of that, but it's a little bit bigger the form factor is still pretty compact though which is definitely important to me because I like something that is really portable not too cumbersome to kind of lug around to gigs and sessions but is big enough to kind of fit all the pedals that I need to include on my rig. Now, very much like the pedal train boards, the pedal deck boards do actually allow you to mount power supplies underneath and that's a good segue into talking about how I'm powering this board. So on my old board, I had the Strymon Ohi, which is the kind of smallest version of the Strymon power supplies. Now, they're great. Each output has 500 milliamps of power, which is perfect for kind of clean power to a variety of different pedals. There's plenty of current there, which is really important to make sure that they're all kind of, you know, working and kind of optimized for the perfect power solutions. But because I've incorporated a few more pedals, I did need a bigger supply. Now, a great thing about the Strymon power supplies is that they're modular, which means that you can link multiple power supplies together. So because I already had the Ohi and I didn't need to necessarily get a completely new power supply and a much bigger version, I simply just bought the Ohi expansion pack, which is just a way that you can then daisy chain two power supplies together. So it's basically another Ohi that you can link. So I have that underneath the board and that's providing me plenty of inputs for all of my pedals and if I do want to expand I've got the option there which is really nice. Now first in the chain is the TC Electronic Polytune 2, a really really small footprint tuner that is just really really straightforward but is very accurate. I like the fact that it's a small form factor, I don't want a big tuner, it just takes up pedal board real estate on something that you know doesn't necessarily have a sound and isn't going to change the tone too much but it's important to have one on the board. Now next we have all of my gain stages. Now I like to have a few different gain stages on my board. It's a bit of a non-negotiable for me and my approach with overdrive pedals is I'd rather have a few lower gain overdrives that I can stack together because that always provides a much better lead tone than having one overdrive pedal with the gain cranked. In my experience, gain pedals which have you know a lot of gain on tap, if you tend to use all of that gain, they tend to get a little bit fizzy, they don't have as much clarity, and for me that's a bit of a deal breaker because I want all the notes that I play to be crystal clear. So I find the best solution is to set your kind of overdrive pedals fairly low on the gain side of things and just stack multiple drives together. So the first in my chain is the Wampler Tumnus. Now the Tumnus is kind of like a Clon Centaur style overdrive. The guys at Anderton's did a shootout of all the Clon style pedals a few months ago and the Tumnus kind of came out on top as being the one that sounded most like the Clon Centaur which makes me pretty happy. So that is the first in the chain. I run the gain on that pretty clean, just like a slight push on the front end of the amp. Um, for the amp, by the way, I do tend to use a Fender Blues Junior pretty exclusively for kind of gigs and sessions. Just a nice clean pedal platform. And the Tumnus pretty much stays on all the time. I tend to play strats and tellies, single coil guitars, and I really like the way that the Tumnus just kind of adds a bit more body and kind of fattens up those single coils. 
Now, next in the chain, I have one of my newest acquisitions, and that is the Nobles ODR Mini. Now, I did a review of this pedal on the channel a few months ago. I'll link that in the description so you can go and check it out. But the Nobles ODR is a really legendary pedal. It's been on the pedal boards of all the great session guitarists, all the kind of prolific players out of Nashville, just because the ODR sound is really transparent. So for recordings, it's just perfect because it gives you so much clarity. And I've used this on sessions myself and I've been really, really pleased with the results. I tend to use it a lot for kind of rhythm sounds because it's so transparent and articulate. So it sounds great for kind of chords, whereas kind of like a tube screamer, which is really mid humped, can sometimes sound a little bit undefined on sort of like arpeggiated chord sequences. So I've had some great results out of the ODR Mini, so it's definitely staying on the board. And then the kind of final drive pedal is the T-Rex Alberta. A bit of a mainstay for me, I've had this pedal for years and it's basically a Tube Screamer style overdrive, but it's a bit of a tweak on that circuit. I find this one is a little bit more clear, it has a little bit more definition to it and it's just a slightly different character, which is just nice because, man, everyone has a Tube Screamer and it's good to have something that is a little bit different. Um, I have it last because that tends to be kind of like my stacking pedal, so that's the thing that I use to kind of add a boost for solos. So normally I'd have the kind of Tumnus on and then boost it with the Alberta or I'd have the kind of ODR on and maybe use the Tube Screamer or the Clon to kind of boost that. And you can stick all three pedals on, which I'll kind of show you in some of the clips later, um, just to kind of give you a really fat but really kind of articulate lead tone. Now, moving on from drive pedals, there are a few different approaches that I have with modulation. There are some things that are kind of staples that I need to have, and there are sort of spaces that I leave on the board for extra modulation pedals, which I kind of use just for kind of inspiration tools. So I'll talk a little bit about that. So after my gain stage, we go into the Electro Harmonics Micro Qtron. Now, this is one of those kind of inspiration pedals that I mentioned, because really I like to have a modulation pedal that is just gonna be there for little moments of kind of creativity where it's just a really unique and a cool sound that can kind of inspire you to play in different ways. The Qtron is great for that because it's kind of like an envelope filter. I've gotten really into kind of Grateful Dead and a lot of the work that John Mayer has done with Dead and Company where you have that real kind of like Jerry Garcia kind of envelope filter sound. And for me, having a pedal like the Qtron, which is really affordable, it's just a great little tool to kind of give you a slightly fresher sound for those kind of moments where you just want something a little bit different. Um, I like to kind of reserve this space for any modulation pedal that, you know, just gives you a slightly unique sound. So, you know, that could be a phaser, it could be a tremolo pedal, chorus, anything like that. Just something that isn't like a core tone, but something that is just gonna be a lot of fun for you to play. Now that leads on to the kind of non-negotiables in terms of the modulation sounds that I need on my board. I've got the Walrus Audio ARP 87 as my delay pedal. Delay is absolutely crucial. And I know you can always add delay in post, in logic and things like that. There's so many great plugins now. So, you know, on sessions and things like that, it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but live certainly it's always important to have a delay pedal. I need it for, you know, my lead work, for sort of rhythm stuff. And I always think that the modulation in the pedals, especially in the Walrus Audio, just sounds really, really great. So even on sessions, often I'm just told to leave that pedal on rather than using, you know, a delay engine in post. And that always makes me happy makes me know that I've kind of made a good decision with all this stuff. Um, and with the RP87, you do have a few different delays on tap. So you've got a slap back and analog, digital, um, and you've got things like modulation um, knobs where you can kind of add in some modulation to the repeats, which is again, just a really nice flavor to have. Then I've got the Strymon Flint, which again has been a staple on my board for years now. It's what I use for my reverb sound. I have it set on the 70s setting at the moment, which is kind of more of a plate reverb because plate reverb is just awesome. And I kind of implore you all to kind of explore that. It's also got great emulation for kind of spring reverb. It's got more 80s inspired reverbs, which are a little bit kind of, you know, bigger and a bit more ambient, slightly more digital sounding. And the kind of Swiss army knife function of the Flint means that you do have a tremolo on board as well. Now, tremolo is one of my favorite effects. 
absolutely love it can't be without it um, i use the harmonic tremolo setting because again it's just such a great sound and a great quality of this pedal it does harmonic tremolo better than a lot of pedals on the market and the fact that i can get reverb and tremolo in one you know in one box means for a board like this which is quite compact it's great because it means i don't need to have separate pedals for reverb and tremolo so that stays on harmonic tremolo most of the time intensity pretty high speed pretty low just so it's nice and kind of swampy um, but you know you've got tube tremolo in there which is what i use on session sometimes if you want a tremolo sound that's a bit more subtle um, and that does me pretty good in the kind of areas of modulation. Now, a really cool feature that I wanted to add onto this board was this little kind of Jack Daniels whiskey tin here. Now you might be thinking, Chris, why do you have a whiskey tin on your board? It's a great question. Now, this actually belonged to my grandparents. Um, my grandparents passed away and they were a big reason that I got into playing guitar in the first place. They funded the first guitar that I ever bought. And I wanted to kind of incorporate this into the board as like a bit of a memento and a bit of a throwback to the kind of memories that I have attached to them and my kind of career playing music. Now, inside this tin, I kind of use it at the moment to kind of store picks. So it can come off the board, but you can just kind of open the lid on here. Um, it's empty at the moment, but this is where I'll be kind of holding things like capos, extra picks, tuners, you know, little clip-on tuners, things like that. Um, so it's just a handy little way to kind of store all the things that typically kind of get lost at gigs. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've lost plectrums, capos, things like that. So just having this on the board, just in the corner, it's just a great way to store it. Um, I think, you know, if you go on Instagram, you'll always see kind of like Altoids tins and things like that. Um, and this kind of serves as the kind of same function really. Um, so that is a kind of overview, a run through of the board. Now we'll go up and we'll plug it in. I'll run you through some tones just so you can hear what all this kind of sounds like in context.
Thank <laughs> you.